Part two, chapter twenty one of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter twenty one Christian Art. Christian art in the medieval church was patronized in all the centres of thought. The monasteries were not wanting in even this larger field of intellectual development. St. Gall in Switzerland and Fulda in Germany excelled all places north of Italy. For some time the former stood at the head. Tutilo lived there. He was the Michelangelo of his time, being architect, painter, poet, and sculptor. The furniture for the sacred buildings grew into more artistic shapes as the Middle Ages advanced. The brass candelabra were of rich details. The wooden stalls and seats for the clergy and the choir were richly carved in all possible devices. The pulpits grew to be a vast mass of exquisite stone or wooden sculpture, and the screen between the nave and the high altar was frequently a place of metallic open work at once rich and beautiful. Each part of the sacred building was adorned with all the skill known to the art of the times. The churches, during the early part of the Middle Ages, were modeled after the classic type. The basilica ruled throughout Christendom, but in time the pointed ceiling and arch came into use, and marked the final transition, north of the Alps, to the magnificent Gothic. The Goths, who ruled in Ravenna, employed the Byzantine style. These churches are still preserved, and, because of their rich and numerous mosaics, are the best sources for the study, from ecclesiastical structures, of the earliest Christian usages. The tenth century was the darkest period, so far as art is concerned, in the Middle Ages. There was a universal stagnation. There was a pause in the building of churches, and a disposition to depart from the Romanesque style and to adopt the Gothic. In the eleventh century there were evidences of a reviving taste, but in the thirteenth and fourteenth centuries the revival was in full force, not only in architecture, but in all departments of art. There was a general casting away of classic models, and the Gothic style became universal. The Christian mind seemed disposed to abandon all relationship with the Greek and Roman public buildings. The very reminders of them were avoided. The place where the Christian worshipped was, to the believer of the later medieval period, a rich and living growth. There must be flowers and leaves and vines in all the rich luxuriance of a German forest. The great window must not be of transparent glass, but colored with all the tints of the rainbow, so that the rays falling on the stone floor of the cathedral might suggest the falling of the light through the leaves and branches of great trees upon the forest floor. Then the window itself must be a repetition of nature in her happiest mood. The rose window became, in all Gothic architecture, the particular object in which the poetic fancy and artistic skill succeeded in the creation of one of the most beautiful objects ever used for the advancement of a sacred building. During this period the cathedrals of Cologne, Strasbourg, Speyer, and other places were built. The Cologne Cathedral was modeled after designs of Conrad of Hochstaden. It was begun in the 13th century and finished in part at the end of the 15th. It was not till this century that the completion of this wonderful structure was seen. It was dedicated October 15, 1880, in the presence of Emperor William I and his Protestant court, the Catholic Archbishop of the city being in exile. Erwin of Steinbach was the architect of the Strasbourg Minster. It was begun in 1270, but Erwin died before the completion of his undertaking. His daughter Sabina took his place and carried on the work. The minster, however, was not finished until the 15th century. Glass painting, for the ornamentation of sacred edifices, came into use in the 11th century with the growing taste for Gothic architecture. It was first used in the monastery of Tegernsee, on a lake of that name in the Bavarian highlands, 
and from that beginning it extended wherever the Gothic style was used in architecture. The plastic arts revived simultaneously with the medieval architecture. Nicholas of Pisa, who died in 1274, was the master in the ornamental uses of gold and copper. His genius made such rich and beautiful adaptations of these metals as to attract many into the same profession. Painting came into use, largely for the ornamentation of the interior of the sacred edifices. The Germans learned the art from the Italians, the latter having derived their models from Byzantium. But the Italians improved upon their Byzantine originals. These were stiff and formal, but in Italian hands they became soft and pleasing. Giunta of Pisa, Simbawe of Florence, and Guido of Siena were the first Italians to take away the sharpness of the Byzantine style, and to clothe the images of Jesus and the mother with that gentleness and attractiveness which culminated in the masterpieces of the school of Raphael. End of chapter 21